Here we are at the start of another day's off. I took a Friday off, so I got an extra day. I'm sitting here with the dog because she's freaking out. She's freaking out. That's okay. So here's what's going on. Uh, you know how we never seem to have time, right? Never seem to have time. Every time we think that we've got time, there she goes. She's going to go to the window and freak out a little bit more. Um, okay, so I wake up today. And I think, yeah, I got this one day, this one extra day, I'll use it. Come up here, baby. Come up here. It's okay. It's okay. I promise you they're coming back. <laughs> I promise you they're coming back. Okay, so here's what's going on. Wake up today, and I decide to pull all the eyes off the shelf. That shelf back there. Yeah, I'm still alphabetizing that shelf. And there's very specific ways that I do it, like uh, start words like the, unless the is implicitly part of the title, like the fly, but not the little rascals. And you could tell when you look at a title what is supposed to be the title of the movie, sometimes these are indicator words because, like, the will be very small. It's not actually, like, part of the title. It's just, I mean, it is, but it's it's not. You get the idea. What stands out is what your eyes are going to be drawn to. That's how you're going to look for the movie. When you look for The Fly, that is all one title. The is every bit as important as the word fly. That's The Fly. That's a T. This is where my thought process is. Well, I've been slowly fixing the shelf. Pulling off all the eyes right now to get all the eyes in order, and... Balto, my other dog, had to go, I know, baby, he had to go to get his toes clipped and to get his, uh, to get his bath, because stanks, and Michelle likes to take him to this place, this, like, special groomer, that's where she likes to take him. Now, we bathe him ourselves, too, upstairs sometimes, but... <laughs> But it's a task. It's a task to do so. And Lexi still has massive separation anxiety, which is one of the reasons I'm up as early as I am, because it is, woke up at 7 o'clock so that, so that she could get ready, and then she left at like 8.05 .08 to run out the door because he has to be there by 8.30. So she left, and when she left this... This little Lexi went nuts. She's climbing into the window, and she's howling, and she's barking, and she's she's freaking out. She was really bad a minute ago when I was working on the shelf, but I came over and I sat with her for a while. She started to calm down, and I figured I would do this. Uh, I'm not going to get to do a whole lot. Come here, baby. Come here. It's all right. I know. It's all right. It's okay. I promise you they're coming back. <laughs> but anyways, so here's the idea. I wanted to do all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm, I know I'm not going to do all kinds of stuff. Truth of the matter is I'm really just kind of going to hang out because I got my sister coming into town. And that's that's a rarity. It, it simply is. Uh... She really just started coming back around in general. I just started having real contact with her. I, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I stopped petting you. I get it. You need physical contact. I know you life hard right now. Baby, baby, they're coming back. This is going to be a big part of the start of my day. Then, I know, I know. <laughs> Then, after this big start of my day, I will finally get back to the shelf, and then I will be on, like, cleaning duty for a while to get ready for the fact that my sister's coming into town. <laughs> you want to see you? No. Okay, well, that's the start of my day. It looks like it's going to be a, a bit of a mess. They're coming back. I promise you they're coming back.
bit of an awkward can camera angle. I get that. I know that. Whatever. Look, guys, uh, second day. Here's the idea. Uh, my second day is, of course, Saturday. I had Friday off. And like I like I had thought, I got I got to do uh, nothing. I got to do nothing. <laughs> like it, was, it, it wasn't a bad day. Don't misunderstand me. Uh, I got Dragon Quest 1. I played that for a little bit. That was kind of cool. I got some stuff set up. Uh, I had to do some shopping. I had to get some stuff. I had to prep some stuff because my sister's in town. And uh, today I woke up and I'd forgotten like uh, how easy it is to run through like the original Dragon Quest. Like I had really, really forgotten. Like, yeah, it's kind of tough in spots, but it wasn't nearly as hard as I was expecting or, or, or as easy as I was expecting it to be. It was it was challenging in parts here and there, but, but I beat it. So I already beat that game, and that's going to be mentioned on the, uh, mentioned on the, um, the new game thing, because at the end of each month now, I'm going to do like a, you know, gaming in January type of thing, where I come in and I talk about all the games I played, my list, what I actually beat, what was worth playing, what was kind of just like a time waster, did I accomplish anything, did I simply just waste money, that kind of thing. Just give you an idea of how my gaming has been because I'm I'm I've been thinking about this for a while now and uh, for me the way I'm the way I see it anymore if you have a bad year in gaming because I've been noticing this where people are like oh man 2020 or 2016 or 2030 yada yada it's not that long of course we haven't got there but they're like, oh, it was such a bad year for gaming. Was it? Because I have a feeling like if you have a bad year in gaming, that's your fault. That's like saying that you had a bad year reading comic books. Well, since comic books are this vast empire that, like, literally is ever, ever present and ever behind you as well, like... 70 plus years of material that you could read that you've never re read that you don't know you don't know anything about that material well then it's your fault that you had a bad year in reading comic books or whatever or you had a bad year in reading books or you had a bad year like I've really been thinking about that and I'm, I'm really going to drive that one home this year I'm going to try hey Lexi I'm going to try to try to really be of sound mind about that and say that a year in gaming is your year in gaming. That you you are the one deciding how that how that works. And I'm gonna try to stick to that. So I'm gonna I'm going to really analyze my gaming month to month, because this is this is my big hobby. Like I love comic books and everything, but if I admit to myself gaming is the big hobby that I have, it's the thing that I like to do. I like to play RPGs and read an RPG story more than I like to read a book or read a comic book or something of that nature because I get the same kind of storyline experience with characters development and things of that nature and adventure and excitement and things and fantasy but at the same time I'm active and I'm a participant in that story and that is a very different thing than just reading a Sherlock Holmes novel now don't get me wrong the ones that I have read, I enjoyed very much. In fact, I have a giant compendium book. It's like a big, fat, leather-bound, cool book that's all the original stories. And I've read, like, I've read, like, I think... I've only made it through two of them. But the ones that I read uh, were interesting, to say the least. I had a good time with them. But I would still rather do a detective story on a video game where I have to actively think and plan something out. Like, there's a difference to that where I still get the same kind of story but I'll remember it at a much deeper level. Uh, last thing, why am I wearing the cool Spider-Man shirt thing here? Because today uh, I made a reference that I guess was in the past. I mentioned a restaurant that I thought was still open for some reason. It was just like a lapse of mine that fell all the way back to the 90s. And my wife made fun of me and I was like, you know what, I can, I can be as 90s as I want to be. I can fall back into the past and remember the 90s. And she's like, oh yeah, well, it's not there anymore. And I'm like, well, I'm going to wear some 90s. What do you think of that? <laughs> so I went and I got my old 90s Spider-Man shirt. Friggin', it, it is a cool shirt. It's never, this, this is a style that's really died out big time is wearing the shirt. and the. But I mean, I'm, I'm a geezer, so I can do whatever the shit I want to do. But 
anyway, that's it for this update. Uh, basically, my sister is coming over. I'm going to take her out to eat. It's. I hope that this is a good day. I hope that this is a great day. I really do. But I never know. These, these are stress-filled days. And it's just the way it is. It's... It's... It's coming back into contact with a person that has been absent for many years. And it's, it's tough. It's tough to know where that's going to go or how you're going to feel afterwards. It can be somewhat emotionally draining, but it's well worth it. And I went and I got the second Dragon Quest because I beat the first one. So any little spare time or whatever that I happen to have today, that's probably where I'm going to put my spare time. I'm just going to see how this goes. Yep. Ugh. Okay, final update. Not much, not gonna be a big one. It's it's just not. It was uh it was a lot. It was a lot to do, it was a lot to take in, it was a lot to deal with. Um But it's worth it. It's getting better literally every single time we do it. So more I get to see of of my sister and whatnot, the more it gets better and better and better and easier and easier and easier. And it's just, it's, uh, it's something I had reserved the idea to myself that it was just not going to happen, that it was never going to be a thing. And now it is a thing. And it's, uh, it's interesting. It's eye opening. Even it's craziness to me. It really is. say that life never ceases to surprise me in its surprises in general. Like, you really don't know. Enemies become friends and so on and so forth. It's crazy. It's a crazy journey. Um, there's a lot to go over on the shelf. I keep, I keep putting these videos off. I keep doing one thing and another and another and another. And we're not getting to the actual thing that matters. We gotta, we gotta get back to the shelf. We gotta get back to the shelf. There's so much shit now that that hasn't been done that needs to be done, needs to be talked about. I have I have the Wonder Woman on the shelf that needs to be talked about, like because it's it's already on the shelf because I had to make I had, I had to do some things to get some stuff in here and to move some boxes and whatnot. So the Wonder Woman's on the shelf. We haven't talked about it yet. We have to do that. We have to add another layer of Pokemon stuff. We have to finish the fourth wave Dragon Ball Z, which should finish that off, to be fair. We have to talk the three Final Fantasy figures. Uh, there, was a, uh, there was a really cool Metal Gear Solid thing that was put on the shelf. There's all the trinkets across this little back wall thing and whatnot that are in here that are really cool that we've that we've literally never talked about. We've never, ever, ever, ever talked about these things that I can think of. Uh, we have to talk about the uh, the statues. There's a couple anime statues and whatnot. We have to talk about some of the pictures and whatnot that actually went up and are sitting up around here so that we can actually get those talked about. We talked about the clock. The clock went up. It's up, up there, so that's cool. Um, there's a lot. We gotta get these damn books taken care of too. There's still a lot to talk about, a lot to review, a lot to go over, and just like video after video after video after video. Well, we should we haven't even talked about these. This shit that's like on the desk, like trinket stuff. If it's in the collection, it's supposed to have a video. That's that's the idea of putting the collection back together, of putting it on the shelf, of putting this room together, of making sure that everything in this room has a reason, has a story, has a has a purpose. And if it doesn't, it's got to go. That's that's a key figure for this year. If it has a person, if it has a purpose, it stays. If it doesn't, it's got to go. And that that counts for many of the fandoms that we're going to talk about throughout the course of what we're going to do here, because we are going to talk about, like I said, we're going to make it a focus to talk about gaming per month and what matters and what doesn't matter and how I feel my gaming each month, because it is my biggest hobby. And if it's a waste of time, which sometimes it is, I'm not oblivious to that. Sometimes it is. Then we got to mention that. And there's not just that, 
but we've also got to go over the idea, like like comic books. As we as I catch up with comic books, maybe maybe there's a purpose to that. Maybe maybe that's another part of the fandom that I focus on this year. Is maybe as we go through, it might not be a bad idea that when I catch up, when I complete a comic series, when I finally read Catwoman 28, and I've actually read all the Catwoman, and I'm 100% caught up with something, which, like, there's two issues left. Uh, maybe I mention how I feel that run is going and where I feel it's taken me or something like that. It, it, it's, I think it's important to really focus on what this channel's supposed to be. And this channel is supposed to very much be uh, fandom. This Days Off thing is not supposed to become this channel. But, I'm not oblivious to the fact that everything that I do on this channel is work and time and editing, and it's it just is what it is. And if I want to have some kind of... If I want to have some kind of hobby outside of here... That's tough. It is, because it's time-consuming. I mean, you figure, like, I record this. Each one of these little clips is five to six to seven minutes long, and then you got to put them all together, and then you got to edit them, then you got to do the sound up and down and whatnot, and make sure that everything seems right, and then you render that entire project, and then, of course, you upload it, and then you send that out to everybody, and then that doesn't sound like much, but you figure that takes three, four hours off your day sometimes. It literally can. That's not a joke. It can, for a small video even like this, I put it all together, then I gotta watch it. If it was three seven minute clips, well, that's 21 minutes out of my day right off the bat. I drop them in. That took about maybe 10 minutes to get everything exactly how I wanted it. I got it in. I watched the entire thing. That's 21 minutes. And by the time that's done, then I render that project. Then I upload that project. So that could very well be one complete hour out of my day. And that's just the editing thing. That's not counting the fact that I had to sit down and I had to set things up and I had to you know, do the video and whatnot. It is time consuming. YouTube is time consuming. And if it's one of your hobbies, it's going to take your time away. This is something that I see Scott deal with all the time over on his channel. Scott always talks about how he has no time. Well, look, here's the thing. And this is not calling Scott out. Don't misunderstand my statement at all. I'm justifying him while at the same time calling him out because this is this is true, but it's not meant to be negative. Okay? Look, Scott doesn't have time because he chooses not to have time. That's the truth of it. Every time I come in here, every time I do a video, every time I do anything like this, it takes my time away. When my time goes away there's less that I can do. So you got to figure, I wake up at 5 a.m., I go to work, I get home at about 4.30. If I do all that editing shit and everything for a video, even if I film it and I edit it, then that takes another hour, maybe an hour and a half off my time right there. So now it's already like, like fucking, it was 4.30, now it's 5.30, now it's 6 o'clock. Now at six o'clock, uh, I go downstairs or whatever and I eat. And then all, you know, by the time I'm done with that, I sit down and I watch a movie, a movie, hour and a half, something like that. And then all of a sudden it's 730. And then I take my kid home. And then after I take my kid back to, back to her mom's, I end up back here. And then that's, that's a hell of a commute by itself because that's like 35 minutes that way and 35 minutes this way. And then I'm here and then it's 830 at night. And then I'm like, I'm done. I gotta lay down at like 9.30 because I'm fucking geezer and I gotta go to sleep because I gotta wake up at fucking 5 in the morning. But life is life. And everything we choose to do takes our time. And it, in that course of time, like I get home at 8.30 and I'm like, I'm gonna play that Dragon Quest. Well, I get maybe one hour of Dragon Quest and it's time to fucking go to sleep. It's time to go to sleep. That was my whole day. And all I did was one YouTube video and it wasn't even a big one. I promise you it wasn't. It was like a 20 minute rant about some shit. And I'm not even a hardcore editor anymore. You've noticed I've given up on that hardcore editing shit because it's not worth it. It's not. Uh, I do basically a podcast type show here. This is what you get. It's me fucking talking. Every now and then I put a picture up or something. It, it, it just is what it is. I don't have the time, especially with the kind of views I have, I don't have the time to put that kind of effort into it. It's just the way it is. Even this, I'm extending and, like, missing out on I should be fucking sleeping already, but here I am 
eight minutes past when I should be lying down, or even further than that because I had to do stuff because weekend. So that's it. It's just it is what it is. So when Scott says, you know, he's got all these ideas and all these things, he, all the things he wants to do, uh, he has to sacrifice time to make YouTube happen. And that's the truth of it, and it it sucks. It is what it is. Anything you want to do is a sacrifice of time. You want to play that game, you play that game. But that means you can't watch that movie, you can't catch up on that show, you can't read that book, and you can't do your YouTube. And that's where Scott gets kind of, kind of stuck. Because Scott will say things sometimes like, oh, you know, Bill's putting out like four videos a week or whatever. And yeah, sometimes that's very true. But that does take my time. That's not just, that's not just happening like... I leave work at 3.30, I get home at 4, I, I record till like 5 or 6 sometimes, and sometimes I don't have the goal to do that, and sometimes I do, and when I do, I get 3, 4, 5 episodes out of the way, and then I edit them when I have the time and whatnot. It's just the nature of the thing, man. You want to do YouTube, you got to sacrifice your time. Which means you don't have the hobbies which are incredibly important to this channel because this channel is all about my fandom hobby. <laughs> it's, a, it's ridiculous, okay? But that's the nature of the beast, I guess. Uh, that was Days Off 2. I don't know how often these are going to happen. Um, my, my hope would be every weekend, but I'm going to be honest with you. You know how that works. We could end up doing one or two a month or just when the updates hit me. So, yes, this show is back. Yes, I will try to keep it as normal as possible. And yes, they're fairly easy to record as opposed to other shows, but they still take time like any other YouTube. And I got a lot of other YouTube like that shelf to get out of the way. So, uh, that's it. We're done. Go back to work. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.